Hi everyone! Today we're going to discuss chapter 10-4, which is the probability of disjoint and overlapping events. We are going to start with two definitions that are on the top of page 298 in your journal. It says two events are disjoint or mutually exclusive when they have no outcomes in common. So that could be you like toss a dice and spin a spinner. I mean, you're, you're, you have nothing that could overlap there. But that could also mean if I'm looking at a deck of cards, this could mean that there's no way I can draw a face card and the card number three at the same time. Those are disjoint. There's no way they're ever going to happen at the same time. On the other hand, we have what is called overlapping, and that is when you have one or more outcomes that are in common. So again, from a deck of cards, could I draw a face card and a heart at the same time? Yes, I could. So that's an overlapping event. And we find these probabilities a little bit differently, or we're going to, I guess, add to it than what we did previously in 10.2. Looking at your vocab on the top of page 300, the first thing we have is just a compound event. And really, you can just think of compound as two or more events that are happening at the same time. So it can be a union of events or the intersection. Okay, so union is everything, union is everything all at once. The intersection is just the overlap. So a compound event is just the very generic. We're looking at more than one event. It's a compound. So think of like chemistry when you have a compound and you're putting elements together. Okay. So either we have an overlapping event, which in, there, there is some kind of intersection. Okay. Um, so our examples on this slide are going to be if I want to roll two dice. I'm rolling dice here. Um, Event A what's, um, results in an even number. So an even number on a dice, I'm looking at 2, 4, or 6. And then a prime number. So on a dice, prime numbers would be 2, 3, and 5. And do I have any overlap or intersection? I do, 2. So I always think of this like what overlap do you have? Disjoint or mutually exclusive, and the two words mean the same thing, uh, is when there's no outcomes in common. So that would be this third diagram up here. There's no overlap at all. So our example, again, using dice here, uh, result from a two or a four, which would be a two or a four, um, or result of an odd one, three, or five, and they have nothing in common. So that is called disjoint or mutually exclusive. So how you're going to find either probability, so if, if it's two probability of two events happening, is you are always going to add the probabilities together. Now, if there is overlap, though, that's this going to be this top one here. If there is overlap, you must subtract the overlap, okay? The reason is because otherwise you're counting those events twice. So real quick, let's look at... The probability, if from a deck of cards, the probability that I get a face card and, and, well, let's say or, or the probability that I get a heart. So the probability of a face card, if there's three face cards per suit, so there are 12 face cards out of the 52 cards, and there are 13 hearts out of those 52 cards. So you might say, this is wrong, so don't write this, you might say that that's 25 out of 52. So I have a 25 out of 52 chance of getting a face card or a heart. The issue with that, though, is if you go through a deck of cards, there are not 25 cards that meet the requirement. Okay? Because some of the cards we just counted twice. We counted the um, king of hearts twice, the queen of hearts, and the, joke, uh, the jack of hearts. Those three were counted twice because they fit into this 12 and they fit into this 13. 
So what you have to do, here we go, is you have to subtract the overlap. The overlap is these three cards. This is your overlap. So we're going to subtract 3 out of 52. And really my suggestion is leave them all out of 52 till you're done with the problem. Um, yes, they, they'll reduce beforehand, but then you're just going to have to make common denominators again. So we are down to 22 out of 52 and then reduce from there. Okay, so you don't want to count certain cards twice. Okay, if though they are disjoint, if they are disjoint and that means there's no overlap, then you just strictly add them. There is nothing to subtract. Okay, so if it's an or, like I want the probability of this or this, you're always going to add. And then if there's overlap, you have to remember to subtract it. It's as easy as that. All right, so let's look at your extra practice. The first one we have is it just tells us flat out events A and B are disjoint. I have no idea what they are, but there's no overlap is what it means if they're disjoint. The probability of A happening is two-thirds. Probability of B happening is one-sixth. And we want the probability of A or B. So to find the probability of A or B happening, you are just going to add your two probabilities. There's no overlap, so I'm not going to subtract anything. I am going to make common denominators, and we end up with 5, 6. And you can leave it as 5, 6, or change that into its decimal form. When you go to enter your answers on big ideas, do make sure to read the directions about um, what form you're supposed to be entering them. All right, let's look at number 2. Now, if you refer back to the previous page, it actually says... We want, I don't want to be nitpicky on our ands or ors. It says the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A or B. Nope, sorry, the probability of A and B. That's the and. All right, and if we look here, it's actually asking us to find this and part. So if we rearrange this, the probability of A and B I solve for that, it's going to be the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A or B. And I have a new stylus coming in the mail, so hopefully I'll get it soon. <laughs> All right, so if we look at that, uh, probability of A is 0.8 plus the probability of B is 0.05 minus probability of A or B is 0.6. And doing that math, that gives us 0.25. So that's the probability of A and B both happening, not the probability of A or the probability of B. That is actually them both happening there, which is your overlap. All right, so a vehicle is randomly chosen from a parking lot. The parking lot contains three red minivans, two blue minivans, three blue convertibles, one black pickup truck, three black motorcycles, one red motorcycle, and two blue scooters. What a parking lot. Find the probability of selecting the type of vehicle. So A wants a red vehicle or a minivan. The first thing you need to do, though, is you need to add up how many vehicles do we have. All right, I added and I get 15 total vehicles. So the probability of a red or a minivan is going to be the probability of a red, which is going to be 3, 4 out of 15 plus the probability of a minivan, which appears to be 5 out of 15. And again, I wouldn't reduce yet. And then, though, you have to just ask yourself, is there overlap? Are there red minivans? Oh, of course there are. So we're going to subtract how many red minivans are there. That is 3 out of 15. So that gives us 6 out of 15, which is going to reduce to be 2 out of 5. So we have a 2 out of 5 chance of selecting either a red vehicle or a minivan. So let's look at the probability of a scooter or a black vehicle. So we have the probability of a scooter or a black vehicle. So how many scooters do we have? We have 2 out of 15 scooters plus the probability of a black vehicle, which appears to be 4 
out of the 15. And then is there any overlap? So are there any black scooters? There are not. So you don't subtract the overlap. So we have 6 out of 15, which again is 2 out of 5. Why don't you go ahead and pause and see if you can do the next two. All right, so for probability of a black vehicle or motorcycle, I have that there's four black vehicles out of the 15. There's also four motorcycles out of the 15, and I need to subtract the overlap, which would be the three black motorcycles. Gives you five out of 15, or one-third. And for number six, the probability that you have a vehicle with four wheels or, or a blue vehicle. So I counted nine vehicles that had four wheels out of the 15. Seven of the vehicles are blue, and I do need to subtract the blue four-wheeled vehicles, which were those minivans and convertibles, leaving you with 11 out of 15 chance of randomly selecting a four-wheeled vehicle or a blue vehicle. So let's look at number seven. During a basketball game, the coach needs to select a player to make a free throw after a technical foul on the other team. There's a 68% chance the coach is going to select you and a 26% chance the coach will select your friend. What's the probability that you or your friend is selected? So if we kind of sketch that out here, the probability of you or your friend. So the probability of you would be 68% plus the probability of your friend is 26%. Now, the overlap would be what's the probability like that he's going to select both of you. Well, he can't because there's only one person who can shoot the free throws. So, no overlap. All you're going to do is add those together. You get 0.94, which is 94%. All right, we're going to jump to number nine. Out of 120 student parents, 90 of them can chaperone the homecoming dance or prom. Notice that word or there in the middle. There are 40 parents who can chaperone homecoming, 65 parents who can chaperone prom. What's the probability that a randomly selected parent can chaperone both homecoming and prom? Again, if we refer back to our kind of um, definitions and um, equations, our, our formulas, the probability of A or B was the probability of A plus the probability of B, minus the probability of A and B. That's your overlap. So we are actually, again, solving for the overlap because we're solving for this and. So the probability of A and B, if we solve for this, is going to be the probability of A plus the probability of B, minus the probability of A or B. And to solve for that, what I'm really doing is I'm adding this to the other side and subtracting the or over. So I'm adding the and to be on this side and subtracting the or over. So if we plug in some numbers, um, probability of A, let's call A homecoming. So there are 40 out of those 120 who can do homecoming. Prom will be B, which would be 65 out of 120. And both not both, the or, the or is 90 out of 120. So when we solve that, 105 minus 90, we get 15 out of 120. And reducing that, we get 1 over 8. So there's a 1 in 8 chance of finding a parent who can do both, because that is what you're solving for, is that overlap to do both. All right, that's what I have for you for 10-4. Let me know if you have any questions at all. I will talk to you later. Bye.